Washington State University is closing the page on its first century. Its centennial celebration that will continue through the commencement program of 1990 is intended to bring together all members of the WSU family to recall the special moments of the past and help define the new horizons for our second century. It was on March 28, 1890, when Washington's first governor, Elisha Ferry, signed the legislation creating the Washington State Agricultural College and School of Science. The bill was among the first passed by the new state legislature following the admission of Washington to the Union as the 42nd state only four months earlier. And from its earliest beginnings, WSU has played a prominent role in the development of the state which also is being celebrated now with the Washington Centennial. It's a privilege and an honor for me to take part in this special birthday celebration for Washington State University. My proclamation designating March 28th as Crimson and Gray Day and the next 14 months as University Centennial Observance is intended to speak to all the WSU family and each citizen of Washington to recall why this great university was established. The founder of what was then the Washington State Agricultural College and School of Science knew that social and economic progress would be purchased through wise investment in education, and their visions have been realized many times over. Today, we in Washington stand at another crossroads in our history. The tide of global events forces us to decide what kind of future we want for our state, for our children, and our grandchildren. The state centennial celebration and the 100th birthday observance of WSU offers a fitting context to plan for the future, and it requires all citizens to be part of the process or to achieve true progress. We must have a shared and common vision of the future. To Washington State University, I extend to you my very best wishes as you celebrate your centennial and I know that the second century will be as exciting and fulfilling as the first. It was an aggressive campaign by citizens of the community of Pullman, then officially only a year old itself, that led the state's siting commission to pick the town as the location for the new college. A hillside tract was donated for the campus and 29 students assembled in its first building, known as the crib, when classes began in 1892. By the turn of the century, a modest campus skyline had been created. The new administration building, with its turrets and towers, housed much of the academic program, and Stevens Hall was a center of campus life outside the classroom. These two buildings still stand and are now part of the National Register of Historic Places. The idea of a people's university, as land-grant schools were called in the early years, was the inspiration of Vermont representative Justin Morrill. His legislation, signed by President Lincoln in 1862, set aside federal land in each state for the purpose of supporting these new colleges. Through the early years, their missions were defined in federal law. First, the liberal and practical education of the industrial classes in the several pursuits and professions of life. Second, scientific investigation and experimentation respecting the principles and applications of agricultural science, which later was expanded to all facets of research. And the third part of the mission, land-grant colleges were to serve their publics, to see that the results of experiments are put into the hands of the people who can use them. From its inception, Washington State's research has been conducted statewide. The first and largest of its dozen research units was established in Puyallup in 1894. In the early part of the 20th century, the Federal Agricultural Extension Service was created that eventually connected the university to each of the state's 39 counties. That linkage between the university and the people has produced impressive results. The discovery of new wheat varieties has helped Washington farmers feed millions of people around the world. Engineers have introduced new uses of our forest resources and pioneered ways to protect the environment. Scientists, pharmacists, and veterinarians have advanced the health of humans as well as animals. 
In more than 100 academic disciplines, from archaeology to zoology, the store of knowledge has been enlarged. So steep is the knowledge incline that today it is difficult to imagine with any real degree of confidence what higher education will be like in the future. That's why the second objective of the centennial, defining future goals, is so important. WSU is going through a very special time in its history. We're approaching the end of our first century and as we go into our second century, we're taking the opportunity to look how we can build upon the past and have an exciting future. We have a very strong base here. We have a strong base in research, teaching, and public service, but we also have some wonderful opportunities to build upon that base. I'm speaking to you today from the Museum of Art on the Pullman campus. I've chosen to make my comments from here for really quite specific reasons. We have two exhibits here, one showing the past, and another exhibit here showing where two civilizations meet, because I feel that our future is so closely linked with how we blend the past and the future, and also how we move more into a world civilization. WSU has also a tremendous opportunity to make sure that the liberal arts are a very integral portion of the training and the education that we provide. I'm excited about the future. I'm excited that you're helping us to have an exciting future for higher education in the state of Washington, specifically Washington State University. The most visible symbol of WSU centennial celebration is the new University Alumni Center, a gift from alumni and friends. The $4 million facility is being renovated by private contributions. The largest of several thousand donations came from Jack and Ann Lewis of Olympia. For half the school's history, the barn had served as a center for the College of Agriculture's livestock program. When it formally reopens in mid-year, the center will be a new window for the university and a place to bring the university and its publics closer together. In the east entry of the Alumni Center, as you can see, we're about in our final phase of uh, construction. We feel that we have about two more months to go before we'll have all of the millwork completed and uh, have the wall coverings uh, finished and finalized. One thing we're really excited about out here is the tile program, the personalized tile program that we've had. Uh, you can see on the floor where we're engraving all the messages. To this point, we've sold over 5,000 of these tile. We're very pleased with the response that we've had to the tile program, and uh, we still have about 2,000 we're going to sell. Uh, another thing we're doing that's sort of unique and we're excited about that uh, as you come into the east entryway, there's going to be a, a computer, and, and as you come in, you just type in your name, and it'll tell you where your tile is located and give you the message that's on your tile. We are on the, on the main floor reception area of the Alumni Center. Uh, this floor is going to feature the administrative wing of the Alumni Association. It also has the, it will feature a staircase and donor wall for major donors that have contributed over $5,000 to the center campaign. It also has the faculty library. This is another uh, area within the reception area we're really excited about, and this is the fireplace uh, conversation pit. As you can see, it's sunken. It will have a circular leather uh, couch in it uh, and, and a functioning fireplace. We think this will be very popular with people as they come back and gather uh, waiting for uh, conferences or to meet friends on campus. This is the second level of the Alumni Center. This is where we anticipate that the majority of our hosting will take place. It's a, a large room that uh, we try to preserve and, and protect the original architectural integrity of the building. As you will notice, the uh, exposed beams were left that were uh, in the original building site in the early 1930s. This room will be full of casual furniture, creating conversation spaces. Uh, it will be carpeted, three quarters of it will be carpeted with Taiping carpet that will be handmade in China that was gifted to us. There's also two meeting rooms or public rooms uh, to either side of this room. One is a state-of-the-art uh, conference space that we're calling the Regents Room, and the other one's a, a little bit smaller, but once again, a place where you can have privacy, particularly on busy weekends. It's been a pleasure to show you around the new Alumni Center today. Uh, 
One of the reasons that we picked this site was because of the beautiful vista that it has looking back to campus. You can see that vista over my shoulder right now. Also, there's a 300 car parking lot to the east that adjoins the property that will accommodate people as they're attending major functions in the center. We feel that the center will have a very positive impact on the faculty, staff, alumni, administrators of Washington State University. Keith Jackson and Dan Nelson were co-chairs of our national campaign to raise funds for this project. Keith coined the phrase, a place to come home to. And we really think that's what the center is going to do. It's going to be a place that we can showcase the contributions of Washington State University in its first hundred years and where Washington State hopes to and will be going in the future. Another symbol of the past to be recreated during the 14-month celebration is the planned reconstruction of the entry arch that marked the original pathway to the campus. Its placement is part of the initial development of the Glen Terrell Friendship Mall. The history of the university is being published in three volumes to be released over the 14-month observance. Special posters, a centennial quilt, and an array of collectibles are also being produced. Traditional events in the fall, homecoming and the President's Convocation program, will have a centennial flavor. And the 100th birthday on March 28, 1990, should bring hundreds of alumni and friends to campus to watch the placement of the centennial time capsule. What makes WSU unique, that gives it its rare and special character, is its people. It's the primary ingredient of what has been variously called the WSU spirit or Cougar pride. Some say it's grown from the singleness of purpose, the commitment to learning and exploring ideas. For many graduates, like Edward R. Murrow, the celebrated broadcaster, WSU was a place where the spirit could be restored. They remember the teachers who had profound influences on their lives. Professors and friends like Frank Potter and his wife, who helped develop so many Rhodes Scholars from WSU in the first half of this century. That same kind of educational quality is evident today. The university's honors program for academically gifted students is considered one of the best in the country. And today, WSU has its first members of the nation's most distinguished academies. Biochemist Bud Ryan, a fellow of the National Academy of Science. Materials engineer John Hirth of the National Academy of Engineering. And veterinarian Leo Bustad, a senior fellow of the National Academy of Science. With this close-knit community of education, there is a strong sense of a changing world. The international perspective comes from a significant representation of foreign students and exchange professors. WSU also is one of the nation's top universities involved with international development projects among third world nations. Northwest regional economic and social progress over the past 100 years has a strong WSU imprint. And because of its original mandate to serve the public, the university has been designated as the primary institution to provide upper division and graduate education opportunities to several Washington communities whose populations are not now adequately served. New WSU campuses are developing in Vancouver, Spokane, and the Tri-Cities. Their contributions will be significant in the second century. With an eye on the challenges and opportunities of the future, fixed in the context of a proud legacy, Washington State University hopes cougars everywhere will join in its centennial celebration. This presentation is made possible in part by a grant from U.S. Bank.